Welcome to John Marshall High School's Exploring Woodworking Training Series. The Shaper The shaper is used to cut the edges and ends of stock for molding, decorative effects, and joints. The speed of the moving parts and the way the machine is used make it difficult to use adequate guards and safety precautions. The shaper does the same work as a router, but with the router the operator holds down the stock and moves the machine. With the shaper, the machine is fixed and the stock is moved. The shaper is a specialty machine that is only used on few operations, therefore it is seldom used. Furniture and door factories as well as wood shops make use of the shaper. The main parts of the shaper are housed in the body. The power is controlled by the safety switch. The work is done on the table of the shaper. The cutter is attached to the spindle shaft. The spindle adjusting knob raises and lowers the spindle. The in-feed fence supports the stock fed into the shaper. The outfeed fence supports the stock, leaving the cutter. For irregular objects, the guide pin replaces the fence. The spindle guard covers the cutters when possible. Safety Procedures Make sure the cutter is locked to the spindle shaft. Check to see that the spindle is locked at the correct height for the work to be done. Feed the stock into the cutter in the opposite direction to the cutter rotation. If the stock was fed into the cutter with the direction, the stock would have a tendency to be pulled from your hands. Fences should be fastened securely in such a way that the stock is supported correctly at all times including before and after the cut. When shaping edges that are not straight, use a depth collar to support the stock rather than the fence. Never run stock that has imperfections such as knots, nails, paint, splits, and other such problems through the shaper. This machine is dangerous without adding these types of hazardous situations. Never try to back stock into the cutters. Only feed stock into the machine properly. Always have your teacher's permission to use this machine. It is a good idea to get permission each time you use the shaper because it is so easy to have an accident with this machine. Always wear eye protection when operating the shaper. Be sure to turn off the power and clean up the area before leaving the shaper. Operating Procedures Select a cutter that is the correct shaper for the work to be done. Lock it into position on the spindle shaft using the keyed washer and hex nut. Be sure that the cutter rotates toward the stock to be cut and that the stock is fed against the rotation of the cutter. Adjust the height of the spindle to match the desired cut with the cutter head against the stock. Adjust the fence for the correct depth of cut needed for the cutting planned. Both front and rear fences must be adjusted for an accurate shaping job. If possible, Use the safety devices for the shaper, such as the spring hold-down clip or clips to hold the stock against the table and fence. Run a piece of scrap stock through the shaper to check all the adjustments before running your good piece of wood through. Hold the stock firmly with one hand and slowly feed the stock with the other hand. When it is necessary to shape an end of a piece of stock, use the miter gauge to support the stock as it's being shaped. Using the shaper to cut irregular objects. Note, 
Students will not do this operation without the help of the instructor. Remove the fence from the shaper. It will not be needed when shaping stock that is not straight edged. Select the cutter to match the shape desired. Mount the collar and the cutter onto the spindle shaft and lock it into position. Insert the guide pin into the correct hole in the table top. If your shaper is reversible, be sure to have the guide pin mounted on the side of the cutter from which you begin feeding the stock. Be sure that the stock being shaped has no defects on the edge to be shaped. Turn on the power. Use the guide pins to support the stock and then pivot the stock into the cutter. Once the stock presses up against the collar, feed the stock by continuing to have support with the collar, rather the guide pin. The guide pin is only used to start and sometimes end the shaping job. The end grain should be cut before cutting with the grain. This will minimize the amount of damage to the edges. Congratulations, you are now ready to take the Shaper Online Safety Test.